systems. And notice that all the files are owned by root, at least the files, not directories, including linuxcbt.internal.db, so this is fine. Our zone's defined, and it's owned by root, and when we restart the main instance, we should be able to then perform a query of the forward lookup zone, the primary zone, linuxcbt.internal. Let's kill the server using kill all named, then a psef grep named will reveal that it's been killed. Then we'll go ahead and execute service named start. And this will cause name to start. And then from a remote system, since we're using views, we'll attempt to query the local system. Let's try it from Linux CBT serve one using dig at 192.168.75.199 for any of the records defined in the zone file for Linux CBT.internal, such as Linux CBT serve four dot the fully qualified domain name path. And there we see the server has responded with the answer for Linux CBT serve four with an address of 199. Let's try looking up another host. And it responds there as well. Let's also insert some generic records that we'll find on internet facing servers such as www and mail. We'll set our mail server or our www server to be 75.199 and this is an excellent opportunity to define a CNAME record we could using mail for example and point it to Linux CBT serve 4 Linux CBT dot internal so these are more of your traditional record types mail www Let's also define a CNAME for FTP. Pointing it to the same system. And notice when we create the CNAME record, we terminate the fully qualified domain name with a dot. That's a standard CNAME record type creation rule that you terminate it with a dot. Let's save the changes. In fact, we need to update the serial number. This is good practice. So we'll move this to 2. And the serial number, again, is used for or used by remote named demons to make a determination regarding whether or not their version of the zone is out of date. So if an O2 version is detected by a remote system that has an O1 version on file, the remote system will know, the remote named instance that is, will know that it has an outdated copy of the zone file. Refresh, retry, and expiry all pertain to the slave servers as well for this given zone. So these slave servers that synchronize with this server will be sure to refresh every three hours. And if for some reason the remote server is unable to contact our primary server, then it will retry every 15 minutes. After one week of serving stale information, the remote or secondary server or slave server will expire the zone unless it's received within the one week period updated zone information. So with that said, let's save the changes with the new serial number. We'll kill all named then we start it using service, using exclamation service, clear screen, and then perform a dig from the remote system. We'll look this time for FTP. It resolves as a CNAME record with a time to live of 3600 cross-referencing Linux CBT serve 4. Let's also confirm that www resolves and it does. It is in fact an A record and works as expected. Let's look up mail as well, which is a URL 
that can be used to access mail. We've yet to set up a mail, but we'll look at it later on. So our records are in place. Our server is a primary server, and we've yet to set up a secondary server, but we've confirmed primary access. Our server is also still a caching-only server. If we cat etc resolve conf, we see that our local, or 199 is our local DNS server, so if we were to dig msn.com, for example, the 199 system responds by looking it up through 100 and returning the results of the remote server. So we're still operating in caching only mode. Now we should just note regarding caching only, which was the first mode that we set up the DNS server in, and that is there is a package which implements the caching only feature of DNS. So note install caching only and we'll take you to the RPM repository. Let's close this tab and navigate to the middle tab and search for caching dash name server. This package will set up a caching only name server. So install it if that's indeed what you're interested in. So install caching name server star for caching only DNS server. However, if you need a full-fledged DNS server which supports caching only, forwarding, primary, and secondary services, then install what we've installed, which is the primary bind package, without the additional caching name server. The caching name server package provides the name.conf that's conducive for looking up name server entries or DNS entries on the net or, function, or to allow the DNS server to function as a caching only server. Now how about creating a slave or a secondary server? To do so we need to ensure that bind is installed on a slave system. The slave system may or may not be a Red Hat system. It's up to you. We just ensure that it's installed so we'll RPM query all grep I bind and if it is not we will use yum to do so momentarily and then update the name.conf to reflect a slave zone. So it's not installed, we'll yumy install bind. This will get it going. And we'll list the steps. As yumy install bind. And once prepared we'll set up the zone files as we've done with the views that are auto configured as we did with the primary server. So we'll copy the files as we did. Let's scroll up and you'll see in our DNS talk that we copied from the user shared doc location all of the items to etc as well as var named. So on the remote system, now that it's installed, let's navigate into user shared doc, bind version, sample, etc, and copy these files over. We could make things simpler by copying the files from the local or from the Linux CBT serve for system, the primary zone, or we could start over. Either or works. For example, from the remote system in named, we can copy all of these files over to the remote system. Let's go ahead and SCP star, that will get everything minus the directories over to 192.168.75.10 to the equivalent directory var named. This will prompt us for authentication. And momentarily we'll copy the files over. Ditto for the slaves, subdirectory, whatever is in here can be copied as well. Again, you don't necessarily need these various zones. We're just copying the sample files included with the default Red Hat build. If you don't intend to support dynamic DNS, then don't copy the files. But it just makes it easy if we copy the sample files included. And also in etc, let's scp name.conf. And in fact, we'll just copy named everything to the remote system. ETC. So we've copied the files and back on the remote system we may now take a look at named.conf from the 192.168.75.10 to 
METC now from the sample directory, we will find the Linux CVT zone and or Linux CVT dot internal zone. We'll change the type to slave. So in our documentation, let's be sure as the next step, copy sample files from primary server to secondary server or from the documentation directory tree. C modify etc name dot conf and set the zone to slave. And by doing so we'll have to indicate the IP address of the master server. So type will now become slave. The file is also the same, so it will create an identical file locally. But we need the directive masters. Masters allows you to specify the IP address of the master server for this zone. And as most directives are indicated in between curly braces or the ellipse, which is terminated by a semicolon, will include the IP address of the master server, which will also be terminated by a semicolon which is 192.168.75.199. So this tells named that there's a zone for which it is to be considered a slave server, and it's going to store the details of this information in the Linux cbt.internal.db file. It's also common to store the file in the slaves subdirectory to show that files that are in this directory are considered slave zones or DDNS zones. But if you wanted to, you could store your zone files in a different directory, so long as named has the permissions, both with SU Linux and 